Hi, and uh, welcome to uh, another week of uh, examining the narrative. And I guess Bruce is going to come and join us in a couple of seconds, but uh, the monitor out here isn't turned on. So when Bruce heads out here, we're going to have to uh, um, get him to turn the monitor on because I can't see what's going on. Hey, Bruce, can you come out and grab the turn the monitor on at this point? So I'm sort of sitting here. We're going to do if I'm going to do slides, I got to be able to see them. Okay. Yeah. So the button on the bottom, the towards the center, furthest one from the right. Yeah. There we go. Okay. And so yeah, uh, last week was kind of interesting. We had a a call come in that. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay. And I even fit on the screen. Look at that. It's, it's marvelous. Uh, yeah, we had a call come in uh, where somebody sort of, you know, just kept talking at us. I guess you would call that a rant um, for 12, 14 minutes. And uh, it was kind of, you know, there we are in the middle of this sacred myth thing where, um, you know, one idea is just coming out. You know, well, what about this? And you didn't talk about this. And you're wrong for this. And, you know, and it was really hard to try to interrupt him in the sense that, you know, you let let them go for a little bit and then uh, try to get, you know, at the end of a sentence, try to break in and say, you know, could we, you know, stay on one topic. But um, so what I'll do, I haven't had a chance to do it this week, but what I'd like to do with that is actually time it out and um, make a list of all of the topics that he raised in that because what we would be doing was looking at the, the sacred myth for that. So I guess we got some slides for this week. and. So let's pop up the first one. And uh, so this is uh, usual. In the beginning, we were do doing a Hillary and Donald thing. So um, what does a campaign look like? We're just about at two months from uh, Election Day. And uh, so at the beginning, there was sort of a salvo uh, where uh, Hillary's crew, we'll call them the social justice warriors, a lot of people um, on news media and on the internet, trying to extract uh, apologies from, some, uh, from Trump for his politically incorrect statements. Now, what's happening is Trump is fighting against the political correctness thing, and so he's just going to you know, say, no, I'm not going to apologize for this stuff. Um, and so they keep hitting them for these microaggression things. Now, what's been playing on, uh, on right-wing radio, uh, AM talk radio, um, in several places is, again, there's a long list of people who had, uh, uh, you know, issues with the Clintons and, you know, coming to hearings and what would happen is two days before they were supposed to go to a court hearing or a Senate hearing or something like that, they mysteriously committed suicide or were killed. And we're talking, you know, 50 plus people, um, you know, air airplane crashes, all that kind of stuff. So that's been playing a lot on, on right-wing radio and, and seems to be gaining some traction. So the question is, um, is this a good list? Uh, is it happening? I mean, is the, uh, you know, are there people, you know, maybe not, maybe it's not the Clintons themselves, but maybe people who are supporting them uh, who are taking out the opposition. So what's uh, come to light in the last few days is uh, uh, there's a, a software product called BleachBit, and uh, what it does is it overwrites the disk multiple times so that you can't go in and recover things that have been erased. And so Hillary's disk had been BleachBit. In other words, when they, they didn't simply just delete the emails. Um, they ran this thing over to try to make it impossible for them to recover the, the deleted emails. However, it turns out that at this point, the technology is good enough that you can actually recover stuff from an image after it's been overwritten, you know, 20 to 30 times. And uh, so they've now got 1,500. Thousands. Whoa. So it was, did we just have a camera blow up? No. Oh, a light up there. Yeah. There's a light right up there. Yeah, we got a little explosion, a light disappeared, or a light went out. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, so at this point, they have uh, the FBI has recovered 1,500 or 15,000 of her 30,000 plus emails that were deleted, and uh, there have been a number of articles. It's all over the internet about uh, 30 of them 
uh, have been work-related and show some pretty ugly stuff. But the fact that they are work-related and uh, um, means that Hillary uh, lied under oath, um, you know, when she said, oh, no, we only did yoga classes and, you know, recipes and stuff like that. Well, apparently not. So there's 30 floating around right now, but uh, the others are supposed to be, there's a lot more in there where that came from because they haven't all been reviewed yet. Um, so I suspect that they'll come out. Um, there's a court hearing about how they're going to get released and all the rest of it uh, made public. And there also is an indication that the NSA has all of them. Um, there has been some question as to whether that database has been hacked. And there is some scuttlebutt that WikiLeaks actually has all 30,000 plus of them. Um, and there's, there was a little war uh, between Hillary and Julian Assange, who was the head of uh, WikiLeaks. So are we going to see some indictments of Hillary? So let's, uh, that's sort of what's going on in, in, in the campaign. But let's put up the next slide. So, you know, a couple of people have asked me why I hate Hillary. Um, well, first of all, some of her emails indicate that she's responsible for arming ISIS. And there's a number of other things that are not so wonderful about uh, her behavior, um, her tenure as Secretary of State. Um, now, the second thing is that the social justice warriors, who are the kind of are the sort of feminists who are colonizing and taking over large parts of the society, um, basically took over the DNC, and they used their position to disadvantage uh, Bernie Sanders, um, which is inappropriate. And there's a lot of those emails against the DNC emails are all up on WikiLeaks, and they're worth taking a look at because you find some uh, rather nasty stuff in there. So I don't know whether that whole thing will just kind of fade into the, into the past or whether there will be uh, court action around any of that. Um, there, are, there is the Stanford study, which indicates that uh, Hillary was the beneficiary of vote switching on paperless electronic voting machines. Um, there was a study that came out on May 10th uh, that looked at uh, uh, exit polls and found a uh, consistent bias in favor of uh, Hillary. As far as uh, the largest was Connecticut, which showed 22% switch on paperless electronic voting machines. And there is essentially a control in this, in that those areas that have paper ballots don't show this change. In other words, the um, exit polls matched the uh, totals within the statistical variation that was anticipated. But the Stanford, so when that, that was uh, published, um, the response was to stop doing exit polls. And so uh, Stanford uh, uh, did, a, uh, did a study where they looked at 337 uh, polls in, in state prior to uh, the primaries and found that nationally, uh, again, in the case with paper ballots, that there was no vote switching. But in the case of paperless electronic voting machines, that nationally there was an average uh, improvement in Hillary's ex or expected outcomes by 9%, which means there's a corresponding reduction in Bernie's by 9%. So that 18-point swing is more than enough to have uh, given uh, Bernie uh, the election over um, even with all the superdelegates. But, you know, the question is, there is a court case um, moving forward on this. They sort of move glacially slow, and, you know, hopefully it will make a splash in some way before the election. But I hope that it uh, doesn't get squashed, uh, squashed, quashed um, after the event. Okay, the DNC was also active in disenfranchising, disenfranchising voters in a variety of states. Um, that is illiberal. Okay, if we believe in free, elect free and fair elections, that does not constitute free and fair elections. So we have some problems there. Um, now, the way I look at it is uh, Nixon did his 18 minutes, but Hillary did 3,000 emails. So hit the delete button. And not only did Hillary delete her emails, but she uh, bleach, bit th bleach bitted them uh, to make sure nobody would get them. But uh, they didn't do it good enough. Okay, so 
There is, uh, again, evidence that Hillary lied under oath, and there's uh, a lot of chatter right now about 30 emails, so up on the Internet, um, you should be able to pick that up. Um, it's not being covered um, to a large degree by the mainstream media, but uh, it's all over the Internet. Okay, and that Hillary is actually, you know, she has taken huge amounts of money from corporations, and I suspect that she will service her clients. <laughs> so, but the final thing that really pushes me on the Hillary front is her embracing of the uh, third wave intersectional feminist uh, agenda. And that includes shutting people down, uh, dogpiling on people on the internet, um, you know, attacks will, we probably over the, you know, coming weeks will talk about, uh, for example, uh, the changes in the law that allow simply disagreeing with a feminist on the internet to turn into um, fines and imprisonment and that kind of thing. And we'll talk, for example, about the uh, um, uh, case of Gregory <coughs> Allen Elliott and some of the other stuff that's going on. Okay, so let's, uh, next slide. Um, so let's see, that's I actually have a friend who has one of these shirts. Um, so, but that's, I think, I think we really ought to be looking at that because I think there's some serious misbehavior that uh, um, I'm not sure I want to elect into the White House. Okay, so next. And it's, it's interesting because this will be the first time in my life that I will actually have voted for, or actually will vote for a Republican. And starting in, um, uh, 1972, I have consistently voted for the Democratic candidate, with the exception of voting for Ralph Nader twice. Okay, so if you're a Hillary fan, uh, let's get a couple of debates going. And uh, be perfectly happy to use the hour for the show um, to pick a, a topic, whatever um, uh, we choose to do. Um, and we will have a structured debate where you have a timed introduction, each person has a timed introduction and then rebuttals. And then, you know, we can start with uh, questions, say, back and forth or something like that for the period. And we'll simply broadcast it. If now, you are you inviting someone to actually come and join the show itself in, in person? Well, we or could, as a caller in? Either one, right? Whatever uh, is most convenient. Well, I think invite people as a, in, in person. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, but, you know, if you want to debate some of this stuff, call in. But you got to remember, it's, you're going to have to keep it short. I mean, this is the introduction to the program. We're going through slides, so I'm sort of talking through the slides right now. But um, when we get into a conversation, the object is to keep it short. You make a short statement, you let the other person respond, who makes a short statement, you, and we go back and forth to do that. Um, and that's a conversation, as opposed to what we saw last week. Okay, let's grab the next uh, slide. Okay. So last week I, I raised the concept of what's called a frame-breaking statement. And that would be a piece of information that challenges one or more of the memes within a social, uh, uh, a sacred myth. So uh, one that I brought up a couple of weeks ago uh, is that during the 1960s, universities in the United States had about 40% women and 60% men. And over the past, call it 50 years, 40 to 50 years, um, there has been a transition uh, to the point where today 60% of college students are now women and 40% men. Um, there seems to be this number that if they approach 70%, at 70% women will stop applying to colleges. Um, if the, if the number of men drops to uh, 30%. But... Uh, what, I'm sorry, what does that mean? Women will stop applying? Yeah, in other words, in other words when, the, when the male enrollment at a, at a university drops to about 30%, and we've seen that happen at a number of universities recently, uh, women will stop applying. Oh, uh, why is that? Well, they're kind of looking for some romance during their college oh, life. Oh, I see what you're saying. And if there's not any men around, you know, yeah. it's like, why do I want to go there? I'll go someplace else. And so um, there's a number of schools that are starting uh, to try hard to recruit men. And so the, you know, a lot of the colleges right now have this enormous 
uh, feminism, social justice, uh, uh, you know, classes all over the place, and in fact, in many cases, they're mandatory. Um, you have to sit through classes today uh, being told that you're a rapist and you're violent and you oppress women and, you know, all the rest of that stuff if you're a man. And then you're fed, fed a lot of statistics, many of which are false. So the question on this thing, if you look at this graphic right here, um, if, if women being 40% was a problem in the 1960s, why is it today that most people argue that men being 40% is not a problem? Okay, that's the first question. And the second question is, how did we transition to this point? What has occurred in the society over the last 50 years that has caused this trend? Um, these numbers are fairly easy to get. All you gotta do is just uh, um, go up on Google um, and do college enrollment by gender. And this comes right up. Okay, uh, lots and lots of discussion about this in a variety of sources. Um, you know, many of them very pro-feminist, others um, sort of, uh, it's the, you can call it men's rights, starting to look at this and, and men's rights groups are starting to form. More and more of them are coming into existence to discuss these kinds of problems. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. So this is, we've seen this a couple uh, weeks ago, um, where we're starting to look at what are the memes that are part of the, the, uh, fender, uh, the uh, gender feminist sacred myth. Hi, you're on the air. What's your name? Sheila. Uh, welcome to the program. What's Hi, up? Sheila. Hi, Bruce. Uh, I have a question. Did, on your previous slide there, did you just say that women went to college to, to uh, snag a man? No, I didn't. Okay. I think that there, there are probably some women who do that, okay? Uh, it's probably not the thing going on today, but I, I do, th you know, the, the people who have looked into this uh, phenomenon. Do you think that uh, I men didn't, also didn't finish what I'm saying, okay? The people who have looked into this phenomenon, right. talking to people say, well, I don't want to go to a college if there's no men around because I want to have a boyfriend, okay? So, um, you know, that's, that's essentially where the, if it goes below 30%, then the applications from women drop off precipitously. But yeah, you, you had a, another question on that. I never got a really straight answer on the first one. Oh, oh let's see the second one. Well, uh, let's go, let's do three. What percentage would make you happy? 50-50? That'd and be good. Yeah, that would be great. Oh, it's, I it's see. The, the population's about 50-50. If it was 50-50, I'd be a happy camper. I would assume that this varies, of course, from campus to campus. We're talking about averages, no doubt. Yeah, and <coughs> there I mean, are some campuses that have that are women only, or that are strongly biased in favor of women mm -hmm. in terms of their offering. And similarly, there are some for men. Um, for well, they're they're less. I mean, uh, the question is, where is there a, you know men's only college in America at this point? I would imagine military and some religious but, universities. But there, but there's you know but, there's uh, women at West Point. There's yeah, women at Annapolis. Yeah, there's women at the Air I Force Academy. I suspect mix varies. Oh, very but, hugely. Yeah. But I I uh, I accept the statistic. I think it is on average it is probably 60-40 because I mean I have no reason not to believe it. Yeah. Um, what I don't know, I think, is what Sheila's question is getting at, is what is your argument regarding why that is? Um, What's the problem that we want to solve by unbalancing that, rebalancing that? Well, I mean, the, the question is, okay, so we have less men applying at universities, mm -hmm. okay? So I think there needs to be first an acknowledgement on part of the larger public that this, in fact, is going on. The mm -hmm. second thing is that uh, what is causing it, okay? And there's a, I have a, a lot of ideas about why this is the case. Um, it's being studied rather closely, so there is a fair amount of uh, academic work being done on this topic and other people commenting on that. And we could, we could go into those kinds of things, but um, if equality, if feminism is about equality, and we pass this point of 50-50, and we're now you know, we've swung, you know, majorly in the other direction. What caused that swing, and should we not be at the 50-50 point? So, Sheila, what's your comment on that? Yeah. Oh, um, <coughs> um, yeah, this point.
talking about, well, I guess I'd have to see the, uh, the, um, I don't know, the, uh, I would have to see Joe's stated statistics on uh, how many people go to college and how many people in the United States are working class people. I'd, I'd like to know that that statistic, and I'm uh, sure well, Joe would... can come up with uh, yeah. a totally trustworthy, specific <laughs> percentage. Well, I agree with that. There's a lot of different measurements that I think come into play when you're talking about these kinds of broad trends. These are social trends, governmental trends, political trends. They change state by state and institution by institution. But the interesting questions, I think you're right, Sheila, is about more than just how many women, how many men, but what are the income brackets, for example? Are there, okay. uh, are there more um, poor people going to college or not based on laws? Um, or are there... Um, is there a diminishment in men's desires to have careers that require college educations? Or is there some barrier that prevents um, men that would normally go to college, uh, prevent them from going to college? What, you know, what are the, what are the well, overall statistics on attendance and, and what's the explanation for it is really the question. Well, thank yeah. you. That answers my question very well. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. And so we can look at those specific things. Do you have yeah, other questions? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I hung up on her. <laughs> yeah. Sheila, sorry, you can call back if you want. Yeah. I didn't mean to hang up on you. So, yeah, so the, the question is, why is this happening? And right, exactly. In other words, what's the proposition, as yeah. you said on your yeah. statement about a debate? What is the proposition here? See, I, you know, there's, there's correlation and there's causation. Yeah. So we can look at a lot of things that sort of trend together, but which are the pieces that um, uh, that are you know are making this happen? Right. And I think, for example, we're drugging. Uh, let's put it this way: um, when I went to grammar school and high school during the basically the 1960s, um, there were a lot of male teachers. There's a lot less male teachers in elementary and grammar schools today, and they're to a degree being chased out. Um, and one of the things that's being repeated over and over and over, it's part of the toxic masculinity meme within the sacred myth, is that men cannot be trusted with children. And so if you go as a male into these schools, um, you know, when I taught at A3, one of the things that they said constantly is never be in a room with a female student alone. Okay, just don't do it because you're just asking for it, um, and that's you know that's a problem. So we have this attitude that men can't be trusted, you know, and it builds in with, for example, the whole rape culture thing. Um, so I've got some slides about the rape culture thing. So why don't we go to there and then we can look at that? Sure. Okay, so let's pop the last slide that we were on. Yeah. So these are some of the, the memes. This is not a complete list by, I mean, this is a very powerful meme and it has lots and lots of pieces. Um, it's, uh, and they each need to be gone through one by one to say, are they true? Is there this overarching patriarchy that's oppressing women, et cetera? So toxic masculinity we can talk about. But I, I did a couple things on, um, pulled a couple things up on rape culture. So let's go look at the uh, rape culture thing. Now, one of the claims on college campuses is that the number is that, I've actually heard the number one in three. Um, uh, President Obama goes one in four. Most feminists are one in four. Um, some people still use one in five. But the claim is that one in three or one in four or one in five women will be raped violently, forcibly, on a campus during her four years there. Okay, so that means that if, let's say it's, let's say it is one in three. That means that every, if she's there for four years, that there's about, um, you divide, if it's 33%, divide it by four, you get about 8% of women uh, on college campuses will be raped in a given year. So, but what does the actual FBI crime statistics tell us? Okay, on the left-hand scale, okay, that, you know, the red line is toward the bottom, that's actually police records in terms of rapes per thousand people. And it's below half a percent. That means uh, one, or, it's, or not 
not, I'm sorry, it's not a percent, it's per thousand. So that half of a thousand means that less than one in 2,000 women will report a rape in a given year to the police. Less than one in 2,000. So it's not, it's not, you know, one in 12, which is what the 8% would be on a college campus. It's one in, you know, it, it's one in 2,000, okay, which is a factor of almost 100 difference. So, so what's your explanation for why there would be such a disparity? Well, what they're doing is they are redefining rape to any sex that, that is regretted. Okay, but you said violent, aggressive, intruded rape was the claim. That's, That's what the claim is being made. Okay? You're saying that the claim that it's violent, aggressive, intrusive rape, yep. the definition being penetration and non-consent and those sorts of things, yep. that that claim is actually being falsified deliberately that's correct by a group of people who are borrowing data that's much more generous data regarding mm -hmm. non-consensual sex between yep. otherwise they do these, active people in they do these things. surveys in which they hand this stuff out for example they'll go to a, a women's you know a feminist group and they will hand out a survey and they will take the people who respond now first of all if they're sitting in this group they're probably drinking the kool-aid and buying the ideas so then they get a survey that says, have you ever this, 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 and this? And if they take a very wide definition, mm -hmm. okay, then, you know, they get these huge numbers. So the argument would be that somewhere between these... They're redefined. They are deliberately falsified. That's correct. Well, um, they are... numbers versus the FBI police numbers, which I think we can probably presume are significantly lower, mm -hmm. given the fact that large numbers of women don't report rapes and that sort of thing. So right. somewhere in between well, those two would be where you would expect the real number to be. Right. One of the things about reporting on rape is the question of did the person feel victimized? Which okay. person? The, the, uh, the, 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 the victim. Okay. The rape victim. The rape victim. Did she feel victimized? Okay. I mean, right now you have, for example, in some of these uh, studies, these survey studies that are being done, things like... Um, you know, a beta male asked me for a date, okay, and he raped me with his eyes. I mean, you actually go up, if, you're look, if you want to go up on YouTube, you can find all of these little videos from, you know, perky little feminists who say, you know, I get raped every 20 minutes as I walk down the street. Men rape me with their eyes. She fills out yes, 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 yes on one of those surveys. That's the game that's so being played. Let me just cut to the chase. It's, it's being, the, the, the definition of rape is being redefined. Attempted to be redefined by a certain group of people. That's correct. But what we're really saying is that we simply don't know the statistics. Well, if you take it's, the FBI thing, okay. However, we, the FBI statistics, I just pointed out, No, that's not, no, whoa, whoa, time out. The red line on that chart, could you put the chart back up? The red line on the chart are actual reported rapes. Yes, I understand what that is. The blue line, number is. the blue line, is the FBI going out and uh, what is it? Uh, um, they have this uh, victim crime survey that they do, okay? And so they are sampling large numbers of people using the standard legal definitions for rape not the expanded definitions done by social justice warriors. Okay. And the blue line is what they come up with. Okay. So what we have seen is a decline over, the t over time. In other words, you look at the number reported versus the number that you know, fell into the description as put out by the, the FBI, and we see a decline okay, in the actual number of rapes that women report having been victimized at to actually closely match the police thing. So in other words, over time we have had more women report rapes um, and you see a slight rise in the red number, but the number of, of actual perceived victimizations as um, uh, surveyed by the FBI shows a declining number. So the um, based on, on on a poll, you say on a, on a statistical measure or yeah, they call or, it or questionnaires of some sort. Yeah. Uh, they call out. Yeah, they, they talk to people. Okay. Okay. Now I I would challenge the word hard in the hard statistics. 
you can have hard statistics for certain things. Okay. This is one of the ones that's the most difficult to have hard statistics on because there are people all across the board, right. psychologists uh -huh. and educators, teachers and feminists okay. and males. So, so what do you think that the numbers are? I, I don't know what the numbers are. I go. would argue that the absence of hard data on this number uh -huh. is having a major impact on the polarization in the, in the conversation. Well, we do because have well, total time, over on time the out. Side. Time out. We have reported rapes, which is the red line on the chart. Yeah. Okay. That's a hard number. Those are police reports. They're um, all the police are required to fill these reports out and send them to the FBI. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where they get the numbers from for the red line. That's as hard as this kind of hard data can be. That, that's pretty even, hard, yeah. There are even some people, however, on investigation that identify that some of those reports actually turn out to be false accusations and Correct. are found that way. Yep. And there are other cases where there's an attempt at persuading a woman to make a report and she goes to the police but at the same time decides not to. Uh -huh. She falls into a slightly different statistic. So even that's a noisy line. But, what we but it is a good solid baseline. I think it's reasonable to okay. assume that the rape incidence rate is not below that red line. The question is how far above the red line is it? Okay. And the answer is we simply don't know because we don't have good measures and because we still have a huge amount of social stigma attached to rape, rape reporting, and we still have court cases where the woman is dragged through the mud on the uh, accusation and she chooses not, but to, that's, not to press charges. But what about and cases where the men are dragged through the same mud? Same situation. So what we always on both sides. Well, hold it a second. What we have is almost, in recent years, almost every high-profile rape case. Uh, Gameshi in um, uh, Canada, who's a you know, radio and television, um, uh, he was just acquitted. And not only that, but they had Twitter feeds from this stuff where um, the women disp or were deposed under oath okay, and asked directly in court whether they discussed this stuff between themselves prior to making the uh, claim. And they said, oh, no, we didn't talk about this. We all came back up in independently to, um, you know, because he raped us all. Well, that particular case had a witness who claimed to have witnessed it but did not join the company, okay, until seven months after the event. They had a car that, that was the supposed site of the rape that the guy didn't own until is, 18 months after the incident. There is no doubt that there are cases on both sides that, are, um, th that turn out to be unjust in all kinds of different ways. There you go. But you can't make the argument everyone or all of Did these I, cases. Ha at any point in time, have I used the universal quantifier in this discussion? Yes. When? Just about 60 seconds ago. When? You said almost 60 seconds ago we could rewind the tape if we Thought wanted to. We could. I think you said something like the large majority of these cases fall apart or other things like that. I exactly. Said, you're agreeing with it now. Okay. I challenge the word large majority. Okay. Then let's go. Let's go out. Let's you you give me some data. I've been up looking for this stuff. No. Okay. But you're doing I find the Duke lacrosse case. I find the Rolling Stone case. I find the, the Gameshi case. Wow. Three whole cases. That's remarkable. Would you that like me to go? Would you like point. me to go through a further list? No, as a matter oh, of fact. Well, you wouldn't. You don't want to listen. I would prefer. Yeah, right. Okay. That we have a believable, objective body that really does some serious research okay. on this, and we find that data. And you get you do that. That's not my obligation. You're making the claim, not me. I'm just being skeptical. I'm, what I'm saying is that maybe you are trolling through the internet and finding things that satisfy your confirmation bias. Okay. What That's I'm, a possibility. What I'm, you know people have confirmation bias. What I'm finding is that the numbers, okay, of these kinds of things, in other words, if we had, okay, 12% of women being raped per year on college campuses, you would see a huge amount more action in the courts, and we do not. Hi, um, you're on the air. What's your name? John. Hey, welcome to the show, John. What's up? Well, I... Uh just one I have a couple of comments on your, your rape thing here, but uh, before I called it, I thought maybe I'm going to have to run down there and pull you and Bruce apart. <laughs> well, it is a conversational show, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, the, uh, when, when they talk about rape and, and rape statistics, uh, you get into this, 
a scenario of, of uh, you know, uh, maybe I did agree to what happened, but I was too drunk to be legally able to agree to yeah. that. There we go. We got the, we got the case. That becomes a statistic. Or I did agree to it, but I'm only 16, and therefore I could not agree to it. It's still a rape. Right. And so, you know, you, you have the, the absolute figures versus... Uh, what actually happened. Well, so. you know, and, and it goes both ways, too. I mean, you know, a little personal, little personal thing. Um, my first true love um, was when I was 16, and she had, ju I, I was turning 17, I was a year younger than her, her and she had just turned 18. Um, so, in fact, she was legal, but I wasn't, because I was, I had just turned 17. You were raped. I was, I was, it was statutory rape, and she found it amusing. So, you know, it's, there's a question of when do people reach the age of consent and, um, you know, all the rest of it. it. It's a question of was that something you wanted to do? And the, you know, if you, if you were, I mean, right now we have the Stanford case. In the early part of your conversation, uh, when you were talking, I wanted to bring up the Stanford case, which is just, uh, you know, he got a six-month sentence. Um, but there's all kinds of feminists up on the Internet who are just going berserk that, you know, the, the judge should be, um, uh, what's the word, recalled, um, taken off the bench. That, um, and what happened was both of them got, you know, falling down drunk and uh, had sex. The question is, was she a willing participant when the, when the act started and then passed out during it um, because her blood, level, her blood alcohol level was enormous and so was his. Um, and so his life's basically ruined. Okay, he's going to do six months. He's now a registered sex offender, which he will have to announce every place that he goes from then on. He was a world-class swimmer. He has now been forbidden to swim competitively. And what happened was the two of them had drunken sex. Um, well, yeah, you know, the, the, the word statutory is almost dropped from our vocabulary. And you never hear it in, in the cases where uh, some 16-year-old girl would ride her bicycle two miles to her teacher's home every day to have sex with him. Uh, it, it wasn't statutory rape. It was rape. There was no, no mention of statutory at all. Yeah. And the poor guy will probably, like you say, his life is ruined forever. Yep. But, uh, you know, that's just, that, but that becomes one of your statistics you're talking about in yeah. that uh, blue line there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. so, so it's not, to my, to my uh, personal belief, that's not a legal statistic. Yeah. When somebody knocks a woman down, ties her up and rapes her or, or ties her to a bed and rapes her, that's a crime. It's yeah, a big absolutely. Crime. Yep. But but when a 16, 17 year old girl is having sex with an 18, 20 year old boy, and she tells her friends, and their friends tell their mother and their father, and they go to court and get the guy arrested, and he's a sex offender the rest of his life, and everything in his life is ruined. That's not a crime. The only crime there is is the legal system. Yeah. So, so that that's my time limit for right now so okay. we'll turn it back over to you <laughs> okay thanks john bye, bye. it is a very uh, complex subject and it's especially difficult given the fact that there's so much opinion and so little fact that's the core problem well, everybody with an opinion thinks that his opinion is backed up by facts right and when those facts are challenged he says you go look it up it's on the internet i'm i'm asking I'm, I'm everything's ask on the internet i'm i'm asking right now okay if on our college campuses today, yeah. okay, one in three, one in four, or one in five women, that's 33%, 25%, or 20% or 20 of yeah. women on college campuses today will be raped during a four-year period. And you're asking me that question. I'm asking, where is the evidence? My answer is, I have no idea, and right. neither do you. The fact is that we don't what do you have mean, neither good do measurements. I. I say, neither do you. If, you if we rolled around whoa, 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 and found whoa, 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 some numbers. Time out. If we had, yes. okay, that many women being raped every year, in the case of, um, hi, you're on the air. What's your name? Sheila. Welcome hi, back. Sheila. Hi. Sorry I hung up on you earlier. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I can, I can, 
deal with it. <laughs> yeah. um, I have a suggestion. Okay, go ahead. Um, instead of I, instead of hearing, go look it up on the internet. I'm telling Joe to go to the University of Oregon and get those figures so that uh, it would be so much easier to verify uh, if how accurate those figures we, are. We could go to the Eugene Police, and those are the numbers that the Eugene that red line that's there. Those are the numbers reported rapes. Uh, I'm just asking you to go to the University of Oregon since <laughs> your main concern is rapes on campus or accusations of rapes on campus. Until recently, the Eugene police were the people they reported it to. And the numbers that they have, okay, <laughs> correspond to the red line on that chart. I sat on the police commission for four years. Okay, we looked at this stuff. Okay, rapes, and, and in fact, um, we had discussions of murders and kidnappings and all the rest of this stuff, and you got people coming in and talking about huge amounts of this crime, and the police are sitting there going, excuse me, those are very rare. If we get one or two a year, you know, in a, in a city the size of um, Eugene, um, that's what they get in terms of murders, you know, is a couple a year. In terms of, you uh, know... Let's not, let's not divert it to murders here. We're talking about rape. I get and, it, and too. I, I, okay. just my uh, limited watching of local news. I know there's been rape cases at the University of Oregon. I'm not concerned with the police. How many, Sheila? How many? That's the question. Yeah, if, that's why I want you to. How the many students? Excuse me, those Sheila. Figures. Okay. And Go ahead. and as for the 16-year-old girl who rode her bicycle to the uh, teachers home and his life will be ruined forever uh, whether she had sex with him or not or, or if they did have sex I mean how do, when is when do we look at how their lives are ruined the women's what lives you mean yeah. yes yes sir okay thank you okay goodbye thanks now so she's asking for this and this is the point that I'm making yeah. let's say that it's one in five 20 percent of women 20 percent write down 20 percent that's over four years. So that means that 5% will be raped per year mm -hmm. on the campus. Right. How many students are there at the university? I have no idea. If I'm correct, and I looked this up a while back, but don't quote me on this, I'm going to assume about 40,000. It is the big state university. Okay. Okay. Maybe it's 20,000. I don't know. The number, uh, the number 45, 40. stay, 45,000 stays in my, in my thing. So if we divide that by 20, which is the 5%, mm -hmm. okay? Then what we wind up is 2,000 women being raped per year. Okay. Okay? Are there 2,000 rape cases reported to the Eugene police, or now that the campus police have taken over, there's now a, a, a you know, campus police system that wasn't there four years ago, but is there now. Right. Okay? So, the Eugene police took the statistics before that. Did they record 2,000 rapes per year? I assume not. I believe that's correct, yes. So, the logical conclusion would be is 1,950 women that were raped did not report the rape. Oh, okay. That would be a reasonable okay. conclusion. Is it? Well, if that 20% number is valid. Okay. So, so you're working the numbers, right? And we can hypothesize. Let's we can hypothesize 10 percent or 25 uh -huh. percent or some other number like that. But you're trying to tie claims of rapes to reported rapes to the police, and that's right. a very loose tie. Okay. So what, so what we've got is we've got at the university we've got 2,000 per year. Yep. Okay. So oh, I made I made a mistake. Okay. I forgot that the 40,000 is half men, but it's actually 60 percent. Okay, or women, yeah. but but so make let's, it a 1, let's make it a thousand. A thousand is a, a, rough, a rough number. All okay. right, should have a thousand. So, um, how many? So that's several hundred unreported rapes on campus hold per on, year. Hold on, hold on a second. What would be the bottom number if we use the red line? Okay, so the red line is less. Well, that's supposed to actually be from your data. You were on the police commission, and you know that number. That's an absolute number. That's why I'm going to that number. So, what is it, 5, 10? Well, off of the FBI thing, okay, it's less, it's less than one-half of a person per thousand. So it's 2,000. 
So what we would expect from the reported rape number, mm -hmm. okay, is one half of a rape per year. So one reported, real reported rape every two, every years. two years, okay? So and is that roughly cor correlating with what you experienced in there was the there was a, department? yes it is about two uh, two I mean one every two years yeah uh, in fact now. you know Sheila claimed that yeah there was this girl raped on campus yeah there was one a couple of years ago okay has there been one in the last year that I'm aware of no okay and if it's not that that implies that there is either a, a significantly large number of women that simply don't report rapes. Or what we have is a statistic. Okay. Or so, we so what have we have is a dis difference between one half and a thousand, or so, you know one half to a thousand. So somewhere between there, okay, yeah. um, is reality. Perhaps yes. It actually may be that those initial estimates are wrong, and that it's way off. That reality is not that at all. So you when would you, you would expect more people to be raped. Data, when you're missing data, there's no limit to how far the skew can go in either direction. But, well, the point I mean, being that if we had all of these rapes, you would expect, especially in the world of feminism, okay, where everybody's running around going rape culture, rape culture, rape culture, uh -huh. okay, that more of these would be reported. Would you expect that? I would. Because yeah. I know that historically there's been a significant problem with getting women to come forward and report their rapes. They say, I'm not about to put myself through all that stuff. The judge is going to start asking me all That's these fun. questions about how I was dressed and whether I was being flirtatious and have I ever had sex before and all that sort of thing. Why should I put myself through that bullshit? I'll just swallow it and go on. Yeah. I've heard. I don't know myself. Okay, would, that, that would that account for... Now, we're talking about serious violent rape, okay, where, you know, we're talking about some stranger well, jumps out of the bushes no, with sure a weapon and, you know... No, we're not. because you just got finished saying earlier that what? many of the numbers that are this claim 20% that we're basing your calculations yep. on, okay. that many of those numbers are fudged and actually come from cases where it's non-consensual sex or iffy cases or, or even I a man or, or I, or I, his eyes. Or, yeah, or I changed my mind after That's the fact. That's it, exactly. Right. And those are typical male accusations, and a lot of judges in the South have used those accusations to free men on rape charges. Okay. Um, and certainly that is, so, that is a well-known problem in our courts. So let's just say that we've so got a thousand... So if that number is fudged, okay. it could be that this number is 250 violent rapes on campus per year, and about one of those every couple of years gets reported. That's starting to sound like a more credible number. That sounds like a credible number. I don't know if it's a true number. Because we're just making these you, numbers you up. Think, you think, no, I'm, we're not. You think that too high, I think that, you know, the numbers that are being, are being set at 20%, yeah. you know, that's 1,000 at the university per year. The numbers are being set by this enemy that is setting these numbers that you yourself have said that's the number are that's fudging being on those numbers. Yeah, that's that's the, kind of your point. If you listen to them talk, Yes. like President Obama yes. on the television yes. going one in four or one in five women will be raped on campus during her college career. Right. Quote, unquote. Okay. That gives you that thousand number. And President Obama quoting a number, I don't know where it came from, probably some government study here or there. Some or maybe he just pulled it out of his ass. Certainly Donald Trump pulls numbers out of his ass all the time about Hispanics and about criminals and about... Yeah. Bullshit like that. People pull numbers out of their ass. Um, uh, uh, politicians especially do. Okay. And so I don't especially trust that number from Barack Obama. I have no reason either to trust or mistrust it. Okay. My argument is that it would be very nice to actually find some real data that goes beyond the reported rapes to the police and that goes a little bit deeper into the nature of the problem. Yeah, okay. But if your argument is this whole thing is completely invented, we don't have a rape problem. We have a feminist problem, and the core problem with our society is that how since many, rapes don't happen... How many rape cases go to court? Okay, if we've got all this rape going on, yeah. and we have huge number, a huge percentage of the student population identifying as feminist, do you think that's going to, going to happen? I mean, seriously, that all this stuff goes unreported? Seriously, yes. I just said it. I mean, Why are you asking the question again? Yes. Large numbers of women get violently raped and do not report it. That happens. You've just made a statement. I don't buy it. Do you okay. have any evidence to support that? 
No, not enough. Not adequate. And I ask you to get some evidence. I'm saying I don't think those numbers are there. I'm, I, am, I am saying that I am listening to people make claims, yeah. and I'm saying, show me the evidence. Okay. And they are not showing me the evidence. But you also are not showing evidence either. What evidence am I not showing? You have red line and blue line that comes put, from the FBI. The, that's Matt, could you, could you put the stuff back up? But that's not a really, really great claim in terms of, of, the, of the overall evidence. Well, what? You could look at this line and you could say that proves one of two things. It either proves that rapes are going down. Yeah, and they are. Or it proves that fewer are being reported. Hi, uh, you're on the air. What's your name? John. Oh, welcome hey, back. John. <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to kind of fill in some more of my thoughts here. Yeah. And that is, I partially agree with Bruce that uh, a lot of women that get raped say, you know, I'm not going to put myself through all that stuff. Yeah. So I can agree with Bruce on that. But it's uh, my thought on those women that are doing that just don't uh, uh, alter the statistics that much. And there's also uh, cases where uh, women have put themselves in a situation where the guy figures it's okay to go ahead, and the woman's thinking, well, just let him do it and get it over with. And then afterwards, uh, she cries rape. And the guy thought that, that she was just giving in and... and uh, so there's going to be those cases, too, which will affect somewhat the, uh, yeah. the, the figures. But uh, the, the figures that you're putting out there, about 1,000, it's just so unrealistic as to be unbelievable because that many women would not, uh, you know, that is protect, my point. The, protect the rapist uh, at uh, any cost. So I, I think that uh, the uh, your statistics, well, uh, it they're not solid, they're certainly significant. What, which which significant statistics are you putting in my camp? Well, you're, you're talking about a thousand a year. No, no. I'm saying that the, that the feminists are claiming a thousand a year. At the University of Oregon, if we use their number of one in five women being raped over her four-year career, at the univer if we assume there's 40,000 people at the university, that's 1,000 women being raped a year at the U of O. Well, yeah, I, I exceed that. But what I, and you're it's saying not my it's statistic. one half of 1%. But what I'm saying is the, that the 1,000 is a ridiculous figure. Yeah. There wouldn't be that many that would protect their rapists at any cost. Well, that's your one half of 1% is probably a little low. Well, that's, and, what, uh, that's what's being reported to police, by, and that's all well, I'm my, claiming. My guess would be you could probably double that and be safe. But, uh, and what do you base that on, John? On, on the fact that uh, you know, some women will uh, not report because, as Bruce said, that, you know, they're not going to put themselves through that. But yet they were physically uh, abusively raped, but mm -hmm. they don't want to go through the, the trial situation and all that stuff. So... Uh, I would attribute it at least a, maybe one or a half or one percent uh, on top of uh, uh, Joe's half percent. So, you know, I, I, my, uh, my thought is that, that the actual figure might be three percent or less. That's, and, that's uh, still really high because the F, that's still, okay, because the FBI numbers are not percentage, they're per thousand. Percentage is per hundred. So, in other words, if you talk per thousand, okay, you've got one half of a person per thousand per year is what the numbers are coming out at, okay, for reported rapes. That's the red line on that chart, okay. If you okay, say 3%, that's, that's, percent, re, the that's 30 people place. per thousand. That that's, means 30 uh, women per that sample of a thousand are violently raped a year. We don't have the court cases to support and that. And this is on college campuses, is the figure? This the is figure at the U be? of O. This is using numbers for the U of O. No, no, no. I'm talking about the FBI numbers. The FBI doesn't it's, it's, it's across the, the It's across the entire uh, population. Right, exactly. And college so, campuses are actually, if you compare them to the general public, college campuses are safer. The rape rate in the general public is about twice the rape rate on campuses. Where do you get that number? From the FBI statistics. That one I can give you a footnote for. Mm -hmm. I would be happy to do that. It's a real number. Okay. Well, 
I, I put my two cents worth in. I, I put the figure of actual rapes probably uh, closer to somewhere between two and three than okay. a half. So if you're talking about three percent out of a, you know, looking at the, at the chart that I have with the blue and red line, okay, that would mean, three percent would mean 30 women per thousand, okay? So that means that on the U of O campus, if we have this supposed thousand rapes, okay, we would be seeing about 30 rapes a year. So in all of your research, have you been able to identify the reason for this disparity? The yes, number that Obama gave, for example? Yeah, I have. Well, okay, what uh, is it? I'm, I'm kind of uh, not getting my, my particular point across here. Okay. We're talking about uh, in the four years of college. Right. So you divide the 30 by 4, then you get the yearly. That's correct, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Actual rates. Yeah. No, no. no we've, already, we've already used that factor of 4. Yeah. Okay. So, in other words, if we went 3 per, we're talking per year. Okay. So, you know, if you. If you well, you all said, well, what if you, if I'm you understanding okay. is. Okay. So that instead of 30%, you're saying 3%. Of, of, uh, so that well, would mean 100. Uh, a thousand women will be raped. Uh, for whatever it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I, what what's going through my mind is when you're talking about one half per year, you're, you're talking about per year, and I'm, then I kind of put in my head, you've got a four-year college thing, so if my figure of 3% gives you 3,000, it gives you 3,000 divided by four per year. Yeah, okay. So... That, that's that's the point I'm trying to make. Okay. 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 What is that absolute number? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Four and thirty goes seven, eight, uh, eight, nine, nine, almost nine times. Yeah. So. so it's in the single so, digits. So so what I'll do it's is it's uh, you know it, it sounds like a lot, but uh, you know again agreeing with Bruce, I, I'm I'm saying that there's going to be several of these women that were physically raped. They just don't want to put themselves through the their trials and tribulations of reporting it. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's I'll a big stick with my, I, I'm not giving you a hard three. I'm saying somewhere between two and three is what's in my mind. Okay. So. And, and that's um, my and two cents worth again. So you can have it back again. <laughs> yeah, we're we're, <laughs> run, I'll, we're I'll running out of time. The two cents next time I see you. Yeah, we got okay. we got Bye. thirty seconds left. Okay. Bye. -bye. Thanks, John. So. So yeah, uh, I think what I'll do since since we're you know, I'll, I'll do some I'll do some spreadsheet stuff, a little short stuff for next week, and we can proceed and, and look closer at this. Mm -hmm. So we got about uh, 12 seconds left. Any? Uh, hi. Hi. Who are you? Hi, it's Sheila. Hi, Sheila. You're running out of time. Quick. Yeah, those, those blue line statistics uh, weren't from the FBI uh, getting direct. Okay. The program's over. We'll yeah, talk to you right. later, Sheila. Yeah. Bye bye. Sorry.